We are back now with In-Depth, and tonight it comes from our own Ann Curry, who this week's on a return visit to Africa. Political and tribal strife in Darfur have left a wasteland of famine, dislocation, and death. Two years ago, Ann first discovered everyday life there to be a struggle simply to survive, and now Ann has gone back again, traveling to Chad and its border with the Darfur region, and here tonight, a look at what she found this time. On our journey to the Chad Darfur border, we are in search of two survivors we first met two years ago. Among the tens of thousands still living in refugee camps, still haunted by the atrocities they suffered, we found them. In 2006, 17-year-old Aziza had told us then she was gathering firewood when suddenly three men rode up on horseback and chased her down. One of the men, an Arab wearing a Sudanese uniform, caught her and asked her what tribe she was from. He said, you are black, you have no place here. Then she said he grabbed her tightly and raped her. Then a trembling teenager, today Aziza is a woman with a quiet strength about her. She is now married, living with her husband's extended family, and is about to have her first child. She says, I married a man who is good to me. I am still scared when I collect firewood, now for my baby too. But if it's a girl, I will protect her. I don't want her to be a victim as I was. The scars on her neck and arms are gone, though there is still one that won't go away. She can't forget. Kamas was 13 when we last saw him. An orphan, his mother dead, and he didn't know where his father was. He drew pictures for us of the attack on his village and said it had been hit by bombs from a Sudanese plane, a plane he said was sent by Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir. He was full of fear. I am scared because I ran away from death, and to be killed here makes me scared. The scars Kamas suffered in the beating from a soldier then are still there. But he is now a tall, strong 15-year-old who takes care of his blind grandmother. So, when we asked if the president of Sudan should be punished for the atrocities in Darfur, he said, "Maybe if he's prosecuted, it will mean we'll have rights." Kamas now spends his day selling bread on the street. He is too old for the refugee camp school, but still dreams of becoming a doctor. Two refugees of Darfur's tragedy who refuse to be broken. In spite of everything, they still hope that someday they can go home. Ann Curry, NBC News, Chad.